Greetings little warriors and welcome to our season two Q&A. Now that we are wrapped up with the season, uh, we thought we'd gather around and answer some questions that you guys uh, emailed, that you asked on YouTube, uh, a couple of tweets. I'm Greg. I'm Keith. And I'm Josh. All right, let's, uh, let's get started with question number one. These are in no particular order. Uh, this one was emailed to us from Tim and Tim asked, how do you guys ensure balance in the games that you play. Do you play test the games extensively first? Now, does he mean the ones we do for the show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess yeah. those are good questions. Good, yeah. We fly by the seat of our pants for most of the stuff we do. Yeah. So I think some members of the club are a little bit more th thoughtful and, and they think things through and, yeah. they, and they play it out. I know Tom does a lot of that. Yeah, like, yes, Tom plays. He'll, he'll mentally play test something. He'll, he'll go through each round, each, each, each game and try to work it out that way. I'm, I think Ed's probably the same way. Well, but, in the games that you've written mm -hmm. for the show, did you play test? No, haven't play tested a single game that I've written for the show. But one of the reasons for that, and I think this is an important distinction, is that this question assumes that we're interested in balance. Oh, right. And we're not. Yeah, this true. is a historical wargaming club. We don't, there's no points in these games. We're interested in setting up historical mm -hmm. scenarios, and it doesn't right. matter if the game is fair. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's supposed it's, to be fair. It's well, usually not fair. Yeah, it's I true. mean, look, the one I'm working on now that I was play testing, it was Gallipoli. But, right. Mm -hmm. But no. it's, it's very un, uh, not fair at all. Nothing, very, fair, nothing fair about that. Yep. I know when I ran convention games and I run games at the club, I don't test anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time for that. Because <laughs> I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to show up. And, and that's yeah. funny. I, I'm, a, I'm a visual yeah. guy, learner guy. Like, yeah. I, I need to see things. So right. I like play testing yeah. because I. I would rather throw a horrible scenario out there, yeah. play test it, and work out all the kinks on the table while it's action actually moving. That's mm -hmm. how I learn and, and I do better that way. Well, to be yeah. fair, we have had scenarios that we've run in this club that were terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it oh, yeah I've run some of them. Right, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you think it's going to be balanced yeah. and you think it's going to be fair, and it is not. I think after doing it for a while, though, too, you get a sense of what'll work and what won't. Definitely. Yeah. I think after a while, I've running so many convention games for so many years, I... If you know the rules. Yes. If you know the rules. Right. Um, okay, Jack has emailed and said, a few years ago I moved from the UK to Spain. Unfortunately, there are no clubs or societies in my area that are into wargaming. Would you be able to recommend any solo wargaming rules? So, I've actually never played a solo wargame. Uh, I know some guys in the club have. Uh, have either one of you guys ever done solo wargaming? Mm -mm. I, I, I've tested, a, speaking of the first question, I've tested a scenario doing that once. Okay. But I never... Never deliberately played anything solo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I guess. Or, I mean, guess board games. I mean, there's some solo board games that you could play. Yes. Yeah, that have solo rules. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, uh, we've played a bunch of the coin games, the Volko Runkey coin board games here in the club, and those have really good solo play rules. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess we got the wrong group of three guys to answer this question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Quick question here from Andre. I, I really enjoyed this question. Thought I would include it. Josh, I'll ask you because you were in this game. Uh, did you realize that the historical commander in chief? <laughs> of the Union at Manassas is looking very similar to your Commander-in-Chief of the Union that was played by Chow. Did that ever <laughs> it, occur it, to it you? Never it, occurred to me. It, it never occurred to me until I watched our, our, the, our Little Wars TV yeah. and, and saw the picture and then Chow, and I, was, I was really blown away. That was, that was scary. Because <laughs> really we didn't plan like that, that at all. No. <laughs> it's like you went to one of those old-timey photo booths. I know. I put up the up. split screen of them on the episode because I'm like, oh my god. He looks exactly like yeah. Irvin McDowell. <laughs> uh, Andre did have a second question we'll throw in here. He said, uh, I bought Age of Hannibal. Thank you, Andre. That supports the club. Uh, and I played with these rules with some uh, Romans and Macedonians. Is there any chance that you will be gaming this period again? The Trebia game was looking amazing. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. I don't have any ancient armies. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to you guys. Yeah, we game, we game it quite regularly in the club. I think yeah. ancients in our normal rotation, it's always popping up. Yeah, it's definitely in the normal rotation. We used to be 15, used to be 28 millimeter many, many years ago for ancients. Yeah. Then we all went to 15 millimeter. Right. You, you all went to 15 millimeter. That's yes. true. Yes. And then a couple of us. Josh and I included, uh, went to six millimeter yeah. for ancients. Yeah, so. I've I've kilt. I've six millimeter kilt. That's kind of where we We've are. We've run a couple campaigns too. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. But. Yeah, there's I don't know, something about those armies being so huge that six millimeter just like feels. Well we need right. to put 
Steve's Macedonians on the table. Yeah. Because they've never been defeated, and no. I would like to see them get defeated. Yeah, yeah. they are undefeated, and they look awesome in six millimeter yeah. with all the pikes. Oh, he did, he put individual yeah. pins. Yeah. It's like a giant pin cushion, yes. you know. It's cool. <laughs> it looks amazing. It's yeah. cool. Uh, okay, next question, Rodney, YouTube. He asks, I know I'll be in the minority here, but I'd like to know if at some point in the future you would be interested in running a few games on the wars that happened in South America. Battles from the five-year-long Paraguayan War in Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay were gruesome and incredible. Have you ever heard of those wars? Have we ever run anything like that in the club? Yeah, I mean, what have we done in South America? We've done, we've done drug wars. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit uh, yeah. That's maybe not so much what you're looking for. 1980s. <laughs> yeah. We've done 1980s narcos, stuff. Yeah, narcos, kind of stuff. You know, semi-modern yeah. drug war. Narcos. I, I've heard of these wars. I actually... Uh, one of the I teach a Western or well World Civ two class and I talked about them a little bit, but I'm not an expert, so it's just it was very brief. I mean, I I don't have anything against it. I just I don't think any of us know anything about it. Uh, Hello World from YouTube says, "What do you do with the figures and pieces in your war games after you've finished playing with them? Oh, we would set them on you, fire? <laughs> yeah, would you replay them? Oh yeah, we replay a lot of stuff." Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really understand the question so much. I mean, the figures, I never paint figures that I'm not intending to use oh. multiple times. Yeah, yeah. we just broke out the Gettysburg game again another time to right. play that scenario that was on our on little, on the, um, yeah. on the Battlefield Trust. Maybe what the question at Hello World's going at is like the, um, the terrain boards. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. We just keep them in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some at my house. Make an offer. <laughs> There's some in the basement. Yeah, uh, some of the stuff, some of the stuff we, we, you know, is multiple purpose. You, you know, you can use it in multiple ways, like the trivia board. Right, the trivia yeah, board we've, we used for different things. We've used that a couple times, but the, some of them are pretty specific. The like Fallujah I mean, board, I mean, again, it's all, it was all modular, so right, you yeah. could use the buildings and any, any, and, and rearrange them anyway. The, the Gettysburg is pretty specific. Gettysburg specific, the St. Nazaire table, yeah, very specific. Um, I mean, you could use it for like a zombie kind of game or, you know, some other stuff, but yeah, but yeah the, the fixed terrain boards, those are kind of, one hit wonders a they, lot of the time. A, a similar question, this is from Joanna on YouTube, and uh, Joanna asks, hi from the UK, can you tell me how you store all the armies and the boards? Hmm. Wow, well, we're blessed at the club to have a wonderful basement. Yeah. So, um, when it doesn't for, flood. Yeah. For, for storage purposes, uh, we have uh, the train and the boards and even miniatures at the club ready to use and pull them out whenever we need it. And then the rest of the stuff is stored at, our, at each of our homes. Yeah. Right. I mean, I've got a basement at my house. I think, you know, interesting that this question comes from someone in the UK. Yeah. Here in the United States, people do just sort of tend to have larger homes, big basements. I mean, we have a little bit more space around here. So, yeah. uh, you know, I store a ton of wargaming stuff at my house. I, I've, I've been all to your my, house. I know yeah. yours is there. All my terrain is here. Most of my terrain. Right. Um, all my historical trains are here. Most of my historical minis are here. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, take the camera down here and then show you guys some shots of the basement so mm -hmm. that you can see we've got some racks set up. The question of storing figures is always an interesting one though because everybody yeah. kind of has their own way yeah. that they like to transport their figures. You've got these like Ikea wooden boxes yeah, that yeah. you use that they I think are cool. Drawers. Yeah, and they're magnetized on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. and actually I'm switching over to um, it, they're big in the UK. It's the really useful box. Mm. It's the brand name. It's just a plastic storage container. That have like the little snap handles yeah, on the side. Yeah, snap handles. And I put um, magnet sheet, sheet magnet, whatever. Right. Uh, in the bottom of that. And I use metal washers on the miniatures. And like I just took a craft box from a hobby store and then I painted it. Don't turn it too much. <laughs> yeah. I painted we'll bring it. the camera to show people what it but looks like. It's just a, it's, I just painted it and put some you know decals and stencils on it and then all the all the miniatures are in there and there's a sheet of magnet in there that's cool yeah oh, oh grab grab my plastic bin yeah yeah we'll show everybody what uh, Keith's using for his with the snap lid I mean since you asked right Joanna asked <laughs> uh, same kind of like this plastic box lid goes on thing snaps shut and you got sheet magnet so you can turn it yeah, magnetizing the bottom of the boxes is, is nice. I mean, of course, if you don't have metal washers, then that's true. That's not as useful. Yeah, uh, true. Yeah, you have to use metal washers. But I, I do think that's a great yeah. idea. All right, next question. This is from Niels. This is from Sweden. He emailed. He said, have you ever uh, tried role-playing games in the club? Hmm. How did it go? 
Well, I've, I've I'm run, looking at you. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've yeah. run role, role playing games. We did an RPG a couple times. Tony's currently running a D and D campaign, mm -hmm. Cla like a classic D and D. Yeah. Um, Swords and wizardry. Yeah, yeah. That's, You're that's into role playing system. too, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I do a lot uh, of role playing. Yep. Steve is running a Lord of the Rings. Yep, I'm part of that. Me. We're part of that. Yeah, we're part yeah, of you, that. You and I are part uh, of that. Yeah. That's fun. We've done uh, just one-offs. We've done yeah. RPG runoff one-offs where we just play one afternoon of RPG stuff. Yeah. We've also done war gaming to add, that adds an element of RPG to it, like the, mm. our Wild West stuff that we mm -hmm. do. Yeah, kind of. We make individual models, so we're kind of, and they have traits and characteristics. Mm -hmm. I think that to me, that has a very RPG feel. Yeah, yeah. We've done I scenarios like that. that. Yeah. I, I would guess that more than half the guys in this club are pretty interested and into role playing. I mean, I'm yeah. personally not. Uh, right. I've played in some of the role playing games. I just, I don't. Actually, you you played in your first. RPG ever first D and D me. game ever that I ran was yeah. with was with you. Yeah, it's just one right. session. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know for whatever reason it just didn't strike a chord with me. You played a ranger and you missed every shot. Maybe that's why it didn't strike a chord <laughs> with me. I don't know. I remember. Uh, in my mind, I identify as a really talented archer. Uh, <laughs> well, apparently, <not. laughs> apparently I'm not. Uh, uh, Niels had a couple other good questions though. Uh, one of them was, will you make any rule comparisons in the future? For example, force on force versus skirmish sangin. I'm not sure how what the format, how we do that. We've never done that will before. We do, will we just compare our ratings with the number rating, or I don't know, or just do a comparison as like this is. This is how the two games are different and, and how they're alike. Yeah, maybe maybe if, if that's something people are interested in, you can let us know in the comments like what kind of format that would necessarily be in. Are you looking for a mechanical comparison? Or are you just looking for two guys to sit here at the poker table, one likes Force on Force, one likes Skirmish Sangin, and they just... Argue, talk? <laughs> yeah, argue. <laughs> right. They just like have a scotch and talk. Yeah. Like I, I don't know what the format would be, but it is something informally that we do here in the club pretty much every oh, week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're always comparing. Yeah. We're always comparing. Oh, we're all, and we're always trying new rules and, yeah. and comparing it to what we played the last time we played that, that era. Yeah. And I mean, that's... I think... Games. I think we could. We certainly can like do that. that. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting question. We just don't I mean, roll the camera when we're doing it normally. Yeah. I think really what everyone wants to know is they want to know our Napoleonic opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's hot. To be, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's hot, hot topic. I don't have an opinion on Napoleonic. <laughs> yeah. right, is it you know whatever? Is it AG Eagles or ESR yeah. or General uh, Desarmes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. One last question from Niels, and this is actually probably my favorite question that we have here. It is how do you organize your gaming sessions? Do you have some kind of calendar? Example, next week, John is doing ACW. After that, Greg is doing World War II, and so on. Does that guy come in a few hours beforehand to set it all up? Mm -hmm. So these are some very practical questions about how Monday nights work here at the club. We have a Facebook group. Um, so that's, first and foremost, you've got to get some kind of way to gather online. Um, we don't have an official calendar. People just tend to post what they want to run the next week, or we talk about it at the end of uh, our Monday night session, somebody will say, I want to run this next week. Right. And then they'll post about it in the Facebook group. And then people will say, I'm in or I won't be out or, you know. Yeah, and if, they're, if, there's, if it's only a four player game, then usually someone reads and figures out on their own that we need a second game. Yeah. And yeah. then they, someone offers it and say, hey, well, I'll bring, you know, a pickup game of this and whoever's yeah. left, we can just play some Ancients or something. And we usually have a main game going. Right. Um, because most of the games that the guys run in here that when we- Are big multiplayer stuff, games. Yeah, like four or six people. And right. And then we sometimes have spillover games. Right. Um, usually a small skirmish game or something. Yeah, or board games. You guys tend we, to we've do board recently games. Yeah, we do a lot of board games. more board gaming. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that I think this is my favorite question in all the ones that we got here is because this has become a much bigger topic of internal discussion at the club recently. You know, we've been talking actually on Facebook about, mm -hmm. hey, would a calendar work? We tried a calendar many, many years ago. Do you remember that on Yahoo groups? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, it didn't work. Disaster. Yeah, I don't even think I used it. Total. That's, that's <laughs> the problem. Once. No one did use it. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, I think that experiment lasted all of like a week or two. Uh, people just weren't into it. Well, we tend to be self-organizing in a pretty efficient way. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. You know, when somebody says, I want to run this, it's it's whoever posts first, and, yeah. then, and then we get here and we kind of figure it out. You know? Which gets to the second part of his question. Do people come in ahead of time to set up the games? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes Actually, a day ahead of time. Yeah, well, Ed shows up early and sets up his games as if you were running at a convention. It's, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's he makes amazing. Us, he makes us look yeah, like There's idiots. handouts, and the handouts are all <laughs> they're they're laminated, laminated and, and there's signs and labels, <laughs> and things are... 
<laughs> I show up late and roll out a cloth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot my trees. Oh, there's no trees on the game. All right, let's try to rip through a couple of last questions here because we're running long. Um, uh, Eric emailed to say, questions for Greg. Has anyone adapted Altar of Freedom for other 19th century conflicts? If so, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If not, may I have a go? What parts of Altar of Freedom would you consider changing to reflect another conflict? Uh, very briefly, plenty of people have done like house rule adaptations. There are no official adaptations, so you are welcome to do whatever house rules and play around with those that you want. Uh, and I think the second part of the question is interesting. What parts would you consider changing? So, to me, a great rule set is written for the period with the challenges and the tactical dilemmas of that period baked into the mechanics. Mm. And when I wrote Altar of Freedom, it was definitely geared for that war. Especially the, the personalities. Personalities, the way the command and control works. Uh, just a, a lot of the elements are very specific to the American Civil War. And I know that people love, in the wargaming world, to take their favorite set of rules and just be like, oh, I'll add some modifiers, and now it works for this other period. Mm. I don't feel that way. I think that that's a sort of lazy form of kit bashing, and if I'm going to play a Napoleonic game, it's not going to be Altar of Freedom with different modifiers. Hmm. It's it's a different game to me because those are completely different no, you're periods. You're real purist than I thought in that. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know. Maybe you guys feel a little bit differently about it, but that's one of the reasons. You know, you and I did the Black Powder review, and I kind of shat all over Black Powder because it's incredibly generic, and yeah. that works for some people. That's yeah. totally fine. If you're a fan of that, that's mm. that's great because you're familiar with the rules and it's easy. Mm. I changed some modifiers. It works for ACW. It works for Napoleonics. I, that's just not. Hmm. How yeah. I like to play my games, but that's a really subjective point of view. Well, we uh, Steve wrote a version of Alter Freedom for um, medieval Japan. He did Not feudal Japan, I guess. He, 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 Sengoku. He, he did. He used the core engine, but he made a lot of changes. True, um, yeah, it's, a, a, it's own, quite a few changes. Yeah. I hope one day Steve gets around to publishing it because actually I think it's kind of brilliant. Yeah, it's he consistent. keeps the command and control system, but almost everything else about the game is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, you'd have to do the same for if Napoleonic or Spanish American War, or definitely. Yeah, I, I'm not quite to the extreme you are, but I, I but I'm a tinkerer though. I do like to tinker. Mm -hmm. um, Who doesn't? I mean, right. So I don't know. I, yeah, yeah, it's a you know that's just just one man's opinion. <laughs> All right, our next question is emailed from Brent in Toronto, and he says, "What gaming items would you recommend for new war gamers when they are starting out? Besides figures and rules, dice trays, measuring tapes, uh, templates, clipboards, etc." Everyone's got one of these little kits that they make. Uh, this is they, my kit, and they, this is Greg. So he throws. He's got, he's even got scissors and tape in this kit. <laughs> now, not all of us have that. I mean, he's got labels here to label units, uh, dice and markers, various types of dice. Counters that you would use. Counters to mark things. Yeah. And so you could throw in this kit anything that you would need, and the kit can be, this is a rather small one. I've seen larger ones than this, so. I've, actually, Keith's, I think, is even smaller than that. Well, I, yeah, I have two, I have two, though. Oh, okay. I have two smaller ones, but yeah, same thing. I have, I have um, the, Measuring sticks yes. that you screw together yep. that you can't get anymore. Um, dice, same thing, counters. Smoke, you can use cotton ball for some yes. smoke markers. I think if you're new getting into the hobby, the, the essentials are, you know, get like a little tackle box. Pretty much everybody seems to have like a little fishing tackle box because they're cheap right. and they're, they have dividers in them. Get a tackle box, make sure that you've got some um, uh, measuring tapes in inches and centimeters, and get some count different colored counters or chips because Pretty much every rule system uses some kind of markers or tokens. Yeah, you're gonna need yellow, red, and green, and blue. A few colors. Yeah. You can get them at the education stores, actually. Oh yeah. The little counter sure. chips. We've had guys who use like I know Steve likes to use little rings mm -hmm. for his. I use little chips. Yeah. Uh, I mean, whatever you want to use for markers mm -hmm. and dice. You know, have some d6s, have some d8s, have some d10s. Those are like the three most common dice you would need in a war game. Yeah, I think it's a good. That's a good kit. Okay, a similar question. This is from Austin, uh, YouTube. He says, I just found the channel. Definitely enjoy your content. I primarily play fantasy war games. I'm increasingly interested in historicals as I get older. Welcome, Austin, welcome. That's how I did it. Yeah. Uh, my main problem is I don't quite know where to start. The number of rule sets and miniature manufacturers is daunting. I love skirmish games. I'm interested in World War II. Where do I start? Hmm, well. 
I mean, that's exactly how I did it. I went from fantasy into skirmish World War II. That's exactly how I started. Me it's, too. It, it's a, <laughs> hey, we're three for three. <laughs> it, it's a natural progression, it yeah. seems like. 28 millimeter. Um, it's a great question because, if, especially if you're coming from like fantasies where Warhammer is just, you know, dominant. if you want to start, you play Warhammer. And Games Workshop does a great job laying everything out for you. This is everything you need. Here's how you get into the game. This is the book you need to buy. These are the miniatures you need to buy. And, and then, it only costs five hundred dollars. Right. Yes. For the low, low <laughs> price of five hundred bucks. But then, if you're going to turn to historicals, you're they're kind of on your own. They're really other than maybe Warlord games, mm -hmm. which I think does a really good job laying out that path for you. Mm -hmm. You're kind of yeah, you're kind of on yeah. your own. There's so many different rule sets and manufacturers and like where you know where should he start? I th well, I th like. For example, 28mm World War II, just Google 28mm World War II miniatures, and you will find resources, uh, posts on yeah. like the miniatures page, right. that'll just say, what are the good manufacturers? And you'll start, you'll start to see the same, you'll see lists, and you'll start to see name, the same names pop up, so Crusader Miniatures, and Artisan, and Warlord. Well, I know you're really in, you have a ton of yeah. beautiful 28mm World War II stuff, so I mean, like, what are one or two of your favorite manufacturers? Oh, What's your stuff? My stuff, hands down, Crusader Miniatures, because okay. I can do a lot of early war stuff. Okay. Um, Artisan Designs, I have a fair amount of, um, and then... Black Tree. No, not anymore, I got rid of all this. You got all your Black Tree, mm. rid of your Black Tree. Replaced okay. it with Crusader mostly. That's about it, actually, right now. Okay. But those are the two big ones, and you can get a lot of what you're going to need for pick two forces that you want to run. Yeah. And you can get a lot of what you need from those two. And the beauty of the miniatures in historicals is that once you have them, you can use whatever rules you want. Right, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, look up, do you want to do platoon level World War II? So platoon level World War II rule games is what you would want to Google. And you're going to find the same names popping up. You know, the chain of command and... Uh, bold action. Bold action. Is disposable heroes. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Combat patrol. By the right. way, all four of those rule sets that we have discussed here in the club. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done rule reviews on them. And look them up on YouTube. You will actually probably see walkthroughs in some, oh, of, yeah. those, some of those sets. Detailed uh, walkthroughs. Um, disposable heroes is, is our number one favorite. That's your... <laughs> yeah. No, I wrote it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, just uh, two questions left. Uh, one of them is from Patrick. Do you guys accept new members into the club? Yes. You need to fight to the death, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but, you know, you have to go through a rigorous uh, you, trial period. Do you remember that scene in the one uh, Batman movie recently? Yeah, where yeah. they've got the, the pool stick, and they snap the Joker, snaps it in half, and he tosses the two halves of the yeah. pool stick, yeah, and, he, and that's just, what like, we do. he leaves the room, you know? And it's like, the guys are there holding, like, the pool sticks, you know? We have weapons on the walls, we, so we exactly. could do that. Yeah, we could, we could do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so the basic idea is somebody expresses an interest in coming in, and they, right. they will email you. You, yeah, it goes to a club account. Yeah. Tony and I are the ones who get oh. the club emails. So there you go. Um, and then we will invite invite you in. Mm -hmm. Come in, hang out for a game night, and, and play. We want you to play. Like if right. you're going to come and game, if you're going to come, don't stand here and say I'll just watch. Right. No, you're going to play. We want you to play. Right, because we want to see how you are. You know. Right behind the table. Right. I mean, there's yeah. I mean, we want to weed out some of those questionable yeah. characters, and the best way to do that is to have them lose a game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kick their ass. If they, if they lose a, them. If they lose in a war game and they flip the table yeah. and, and they you know and they're angry, and mad, and they're pouting, yeah. it's, you're not going to make it in this club. Right. And we, we we've we've all known each other so long that we all kind of have a good sense of. Who, what kind of personality we're looking for, who right. we get along with. Right. And I can, after somebody is, has been here once, we, I think we all have an immediate opinion and can actually pretty much guess what everybody else is going to think. Right. You kind of get a gut feeling. Yeah. So we, we do accept new members into the club. There's no like formal process, yeah. but I think you kind of walked through the... Oh, and, and then we decide whether we're going to invite you back or not. If you can make fun of yourself... Right. And laugh at yourself. Yeah. Then you'll be okay here. Because I have to. Because we all laugh at you. Yeah, right. right. Not the you will be bag. picked on relentlessly. <laughs> so. um, I think if you can laugh at yourself and you have a, you know, a sense of humor. Yeah. Um, but we've had, we've had people that fit our sense of humor and were really personable. Yeah. But once they started rolling dice, it, it's something. Yeah. They, they were it's, really too yeah competitive. exactly. Once they get into that game dynamic, they're. Is yeah. it a switch goes off? This yeah. is and I, every club I'm sure has a different sort of vibe, but yeah. like this is not a competitive gaming club. No. People come here to hang out, and I think people yeah. want to win, but right. not 
no one here cares if right. they've lost the game. Like, no. it doesn't matter to anyone here. No. I mean, and, and that's a good way of putting it. Like, there, I don't care if I win or lose. Right. But there are members, that, like, some people that really do want to win, but they don't care if they don't. They, to yes. them, the, the, the challenge is important, but the, the competitiveness isn't See, off the charts. Okay, so this is going to go to his head when he hears yeah. this, but my favorite person in this club, the game against, yeah. has always been Chow. Okay. And it's because every time you play with Chow, yeah. he is trying to kick your ass. <laughs> he wants That's true. to... Yeah. He's not a competitive gamer no, huh? in the sense that he's you know, looking to pull a fast one on you. Yeah. It's just you know He's no putting matter, it all into it. No matter what the game is, yeah, yeah. he is there to beat you. Yeah. And I think that that's fun because yeah. it's like, oh, it's like, listen, when you and I play, oh, I don't give a crap. It's such a relaxed. It's a, yeah. it's a totally different game. Yeah. We spend most of the time talking. Yeah. When I'm playing with Chow, it's like, oh shit, like I gotta, gotta really think about it. I gotta really think about this. Chow's <laughs> trying to murder me in this game. You know. Like, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. he's he's got a good kind of. Mm. You know, um, low key kind of mentality. He's yeah. very self deprecating. It, yeah. If he rolls ones and he and ro runs are bad. If he keeps on rolling ones, and he's just gonna be like, well, he's yeah. trying to murder you in a quiet way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, well, it, smile, it, it is. With, it is. Smile, with a smile on his face, he's very quietly. He's trying to completely destroy you. <laughs> yeah. But it is fun game, gaming against him because it is a challenge. It, uh, yeah. I like that. Uh, my other, my favorite is Ed. Oh, uh, because Ed. Ed is yeah, it's that to way too. Yeah. Uh, yes. But he will. He's. I, that's why I try to get on the same team as him. Ed is Ed is just the consummate gentleman. Yes, he, he is, is a gentleman war gamer. He is a gentleman. Like I, I close the my eyes and I here. picture him in like a like he's got like the H.G. Wells suit on. <laughs> we, you know, like when yeah. he's playing against. We regularly him. say we don't deserve. We it. do yeah. not deserve it. <laughs> the, the worst the worst thing that ever can happen to you is being a game against Ed and Ed opens up a rule book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well. Oh boy, we're in trouble now. <laughs> because you know when he opens it up, he already knows it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he's opening it up, and you're like, damn it, he already knows. Yeah, he, oh, he's, he's just gonna show, show it to yes. you. <laughs> he's, yeah, exactly. Do it all, all right. Thanks so much for joining us for the uh, season two Q and A wrap up, guys. Really fun answering all of your questions. If you stuck here through the end, I don't even know how long we were talking, but it had to oh, be wow. a long. And time. I think we we didn't even know anything about the first four questions. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. You get what you pay for, people. <laughs> right.